Oh. Um, heaven, I had my first last night, my first one whole heart experience. Oh my God. It was, it was so wild, intense, and full of fun. Kathy had a training for deliverance. Julie was there. And uh, we were supposed to get trained in deliverance, and all of a sudden she brought in the skills. She brought in the one whole heart part of deliverance. And man, I cannot tell you how the Holy Spirit orchestrated that meeting. You know, it, it has been, um, I mean, we all ended up getting one whole heart in and delivered and we got to see Kathy shining, you know, in her in her gift and in her calling. And I'll tell you what, this this woman, I mean, I know that you all love her, love her deeply and dearly, but we haven't seen anything yet with Kathy. And um, I, I just asked her to stand up here with me because I feel like, you know, I don't like to preach alone. I like to, you know, I like to preach with everybody. I like to, it's kind of like a together family thing. And, in the past, I've had people, David's here. Where is he? He left. Did you guys, David, uh, 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 he's here somewhere. What a special, David is here. Oh my God. Come on, give him a shout. Come on. Come on. Come on. David. And it has been a military morning I wanna I was asking God if I should if I should share about my dream last night because um, it was a powerful dream and I'm telling you I have to be careful because the presence of God was so strong in my dream that if I go into it I won't be able to talk because God it was God's glory it was God's glory it was God's presence I can still feel the weight of the glory in my dream and when I woke up um, I kept going in and out of the dream, even whenever I was driving. Did you guys see the train that was stuck here in front? It's like stuck on the tracks. I can't believe it. It was like God confirmed my dream in the natural. And, and I just, you know, pieces are coming together. I, I love that Kathy was saying, you know, it's time to get a little militant. I feel like Jesus feels the same way. Um, I, I feel like it's time, you know, God told me a long time ago that my frustration was of Him. And, uh, you know, He says the whole, the whole earth is frustrated. And there's a frustration that's ungodly and there's a frustration that's very godly. And uh, I, I felt like, you know, the past month or two months, there has been so, actually since October, um, there has been so much that has caused a frustration so deep on the inside of me. I said, God, I have got to understand the word. I've got to understand what happened at that cross. You've got to take me in to the cross so that I know about authority. I know the power that we have, the authority that we had. Jesus, from the very beginning, it was God's intent that we would rule and reign. And it's still his intent now that we, the people, filled with the Holy Spirit, we have the same spirit that rose Jesus. There is no power greater than the atomic bomb power of the Holy Spirit that's on the inside of every one of us. And I start to feel it right now in my hands. But I, I had this dream that was like, only God knew that I spent a whole night. Um, oh, go, go ahead, just let him out. You know, don't hold him in, he's in you. And the Holy Spirit's on the inside of you. And if you need to just release the Holy Spirit, don't be afraid to do it. I need it, actually. I need your spirit. I need you to be alive and fully alive in God so that we can do this thing together. I'm shaking from my head to my tippy toes. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Do you want to see down there? The first time that I preached, I had Papa Greg next to me and Adam on the next, on the other side, and they were holding my pants up. And today I have my, my special belt that goes real tight so that my pants don't fall down. But, uh, you know, I sweat. They said that whenever I matured, I would stop, you know, being so intense and sweating. And it hasn't happened yet. So every time I talk, I end up getting full of God's fire. It's like a fire. Shut up in your bones that's so hot, you can't help it to come out. And I, Papa Dan, my two Papas are here today. Papa, my, my dad is right there, which is really cool because he was in my dream last night. 
My brother is here. He was in my drink last night. Megan is here. My nephew's here. All the girls behind them were in my dream last night. Dan was in my dream. But is Harold here? Harold? So listen, you have to follow me. That, that just follow me. I'm asking for an, a spirit of interpretation that you would be able to understand and follow me as I just keep going through things. Because it's a lot. I feel like God put so much on the inside of me. And uh, Papa Dan, you know, he has such a gift to go through. Ah, 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 ah. Mama. <laughs> Sit. Focus. Focus. Um, you were in my dream last night, too. You were, yes. But um, Papa Dan, Harold preached like two weeks ago, and it was such a beautiful gift that God brought through Harold. His name, I think, actually means preacher. And when he got up to preach and went through the word, I felt God's spirit so strong. And last week, Papa Dan preached, and um, I'm so happy, like I said, this frustration on the inside of me. Please, anything that I say is coming out of my walk with God. I've had a lot of long conversations with a lot of you. Please don't do what I do and think that what I'm saying is about our conversations. It's not. I, I, everything I say is out of my own relationship and walk with God. So if I get hard or I start yelling, it's not at you. It's actually coming out of my own thing uh, with God in the secret place. And so... Um, do you understand what I'm saying? Like me, do you ever hear someone preaching and think, they're talking about me. And you start feeling all condemned. Don't do that today, okay? Don't do that. Papa Dan, uh, as he was preaching last week, um, I, in my spirit, in my mind, in, in my spirit, I could see Jesus. And I saw him, you know, with the prayer shop on. And he looked, it was while Papa Dan was preaching. He looked up and I saw, I saw the word, of, I saw the face of Jesus and there were words written all over his face. And, uh, and, and I felt like, you know, Rabbi, the Rabbi is here. Jesus, the teacher, the Rabbi is here and he's present. He is the word coming alive. And, uh, and, and there is a grace right now in the word of God to get what you need. There is more spirit in this word right here. This word is spirit breathed. It's more powerful than anything that can come at you. Anything that the enemy can throw at you. There's more power and there's more spirit in this word. And what I love so much about Papa Dan, when I kind of get off on this end or get off of this direction, Papa Dan knows the word inside and out. And he kind of comes with that edge of, well, let's see what the Bible says. You know, it's time for us to, to know what the Bible says. It's time for me to know what the Bible says. And, and you know, we're going to go through Romans. Oh, God. Oh, God. Uh, Romans 6, 7, and 8. We're going to take a look today at Philippians, maybe Philippians 3. We're maybe going to, I don't mean, Ephesians chapter 2. Oh, my gosh. It's so amazing. I have no idea which direction we're going to go because it could be literally a million, million directions. And this word is so amazing. But I want you all to put your hands on your belly right now. Holy Spirit, could you turn me up a little bit, or am I too loud? Uh, am I loud? Okay. <laughs> Holy Spirit, I'm asking you right now for the power of your Holy Spirit to bubble up on the inside of every single person in this room. God, I'm asking for the move of your Holy Spirit. I'm asking for the wind and the breath of heaven to come and bubble up and fill on the inside of each and every one of us like never before. Father, I pray for divine encounters with God today. Father, I, I pray that people would come alive to their purpose like never before. I speak purpose to the purpose, purposelessness. I speak identity to where there's shame in the name of Jesus. And I say today marks the day that we all come alive and into the new place of God. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say it again. Hallelujah. I feel like I want to 
showed up as rabbi. I mean, I got the rabbi on the inside of me. Of course I can teach. And I'm like, I'm going to get a blackboard or I'm going to get a chalkboard or something. And, 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 and then I'm like, oh, that's too much. I'm, you know, I was like, oh, so I was like, just use your hands. And I'm like, okay, so, you know, so when I go like this, this means reformation. This is the cross in the timeline of God. Before Jesus is the old, after Jesus is the new. In the new, we have above and beneath. You get it? Above and beneath. We want to be people that are not only in the new, but are in the new, but in the above. Okay? I feel like God said it's time that your situations become less real to you than the Spirit. That the Spirit is going to become more real to us than our situation. It's time for us to stop talking so much about our situation and get in to His situation because He is where we are, seated with Christ in heavenly places. How about it's time to get up and in? Huh? That's where I want to be. That's what the Spirit inside of me says. It's time to get up and it's time to get in. And when that becomes more real, then your situation, your situation will change, baby. <laughs> Fire of God burn on the inside of us with an intensity like never before. Oh, I'm so excited for the word. It's the word in me. Oh, it is alive. Okay, so let me just go back to this. So I had a dream, okay? I'm so thankful for Papa Dad. How many just... How the word just confirmed the word and things click and come together. There is nothing more exciting than when you read the Bible and it starts to make sense. <laughs> this is a spiritual, this is a spirit book. He said to the Pharisees, he said, you look for eternal life in the scriptures, but you don't even know. It's me that you're looking for. The word was with them and they didn't get it because it was in their mind and it wasn't in their hearts. Jesus, when he was walking with the men on the road to Emmaus, he said, didn't our hearts burn on the inside? Jesus was with us, and our hearts were burning as he opened up the scriptures to us. Yeah. That's what's happening in the secret place right now. Yeah. The scriptures are coming alive. That and Jesus is burning in yeah. us like never before. And I'm so excited. Are you guys excited? Yeah. Come on. Before that was the 
scripture that I posted on Facebook that says, I, I'm not a God, a God that should lie. You know, it's right before that in the scriptures. I look at Dan just so he can tell me I'm right with the word. <laughs> I, I want to be right with the word. But here's the thing about the word. When you're hungry for the word, he says that if you ask me for bread, I will not give you a, a scorpion or a snake or a stone. I, if you're hungry for God and you want the pure, real thing, God's not going to give you deception. He's not going to send liars to you to lie about you or lie about the word. He's going to give you bread from heaven. And I feel like there's so much bread right now. He is the bread of life. Right. And, uh, and so this dream last night, it was so powerful. Only God knew that about a week ago, I stayed up all night long and I was watching um, about uh, um, warships. What are those warships called? Like the big one, the aircraft carriers. Warships, Warships. Yeah. aircraft carriers. Like I was reading and learning all about them, documentaries. I mean, it is amazing what these, you know, Air Force One can do, submarines in the military can do, uh, these these ships, what they can do. And and I've been reading and just research so fascinated. Like, why am I fascinated about? That? I go down these bunny trails, and then I find out God's on those bunny trails. He likes those, but they lead you to life and. And so, like, I'm in this dream, and it was so real to me. That was an awesome prayer for Africa. I love you so much. You are my sister. I just, I will go into any war with you. I will be in any trenches with you. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I, oh God. But, and so that was part of the dream where uh, I'm on this aircraft carrier, and I started hearing the song, um, Highway to the danger zone. <laughs> Gonna take it my way to the danger zone. <laughs> That's from Taka. <coughs> you kids, are you old enough to know about Taka? Are you? Okay. My dad and my brother know about Taka. I'm in Taka. And I'm like, oh, this is so significant to me. Like, I, even in the dream, I was thinking this is like when I was a guy. I remember watching it when I was little. And, uh, and, 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 and like, there's this rumble. And I'm like, this is so heavenly. Something's going on in the heavens in the dream. I'm thinking there's this rumble and these massive F1 what? F-130. F-130s. There's like this whole ship full of F-130s. And I'm being escorted to my F-130. And, um, and I'm walking, and, and I'm hearing this highway to the danger zone. And I'm telling you, I felt the spirit. I felt God so strong. You know, it says he is a warrior. A warrior is his name. And I felt that him in me as the warrior. And, um, and, and I'm getting, they're escorting me into my F-130. And I'm just, even in the dream, I think I was so overcome by the power of the ship and the power of these Air Force carriers, or of, the, of the plane. And um, as I'm walking up onto the plane, I, <coughs> I pulled a picture out of my, my pants and it was of my, my wife and my kids. And I was like, it was just so, it was just so like, I looked at them and I smiled and I was like, this is for you. And I put it back in, I'm crying. And, and, I, and I look at the Air Force thing that I'm getting into and it says, um, and it says, um, um, defender of the weak. <laughs> and see, what you don't know is that I've been so broken in my, in my masculinity, part of my story, my testimony. My masculinity has been so broken. And, and about a year ago or whatever, the Lord spoke to me and, and he said, I want you to see who you are in the spirit. And, uh, and I went into this picture and I saw myself like, wow. Oh, like, like, you know, how God sees us and how we see ourselves are two, di two different things sometimes. And it's God's intention that the two become one. That how he sees us becomes who we are. And, and, and the, the, the vision of myself was so different than how God saw me. And I was, man, I was a warrior. I had, like, I was fierce, man. I was so powerful. I was like, I was like, whoa, I'd be scared of that dude. That's how God and, and, and the Lord said, and the Lord said, the Lord said, Bo, you are a defender of the weak. And it, it, it broke me because if there's anything that's masculine, if there's anything that's in the heart of God and feminine, but if there's anything in the heart of God, see, we try to make, make men good boys. 
We try to just make them behave and just, oh, just be a good, just be a good. You know, but there's a wild side of God that is very, and it's time for men and women to rise up in their masculinity and in their faith. It's time to stop making boys, girls, and girls, boys. The boys are becoming more like girls, and the boys, it's wrong. There is a masculine side of God, and there is a feminine side of God that's in us, that's needed in the world. And so I'm, I'm weeping because I'm like, this is my identity, man. I'm a defender of the weak. You know, I, I, I'm not called the people that have it all together. If you have it all together, you're not going to get me. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> I've given up. I, I'm not going to try anymore to, to, to please anybody or anything. But I'll tell you what, the desperate will understand me, and the desperate will receive the life that's on the inside of me because they need it too. God gave me desperation as a gift. And, and I'll tell you what, he said, get in your lane, you're called to the sick. And the sick, you know, the sick are people like me, people that struggle in addiction. I have such a heart and a compassion for people in addiction because I know what it's like when you cannot get out of a behavior. I know what it's like that against your will, you can't stop or control your behavior. I know what that's like. Loving God with all your heart and not being able to break free, break free from something. I have so much compassion in that place. And so I'm like, God, give me the addicts, you know. Don't give me the person there's life's all perfect. Give me the addicts and, and I'll show you potential to change the world. I'll show you someone that can flip the world upside down. Like the disciples that didn't have their crap all together either. And, 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 and so I'm in this aircraft carrier and, and I'm feeling, I'm still hearing that song, you know, uh, to the danger zone. And I'm thinking uh, about that picture of that guy on the horse going straight into the fire. And, um, after I kind of I kind of had an aerial view in the dream, and I saw that I, it wasn't just me uh, in these air in these um, fire jet flights, but I saw several of you, one after another after another. I start seeing your faces, and I, I was scared because when I woke up, I said, "If I see anybody, I'm not going to be able to make it because." I was seeing you in the spirit. I was seeing you by the spirit, and it was the most beautiful thing. And, um, and, 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 and I'm weeping, and I'm weeping, and I look over, and you know, it, I, it was kind of clear that I was kind of in the front because I couldn't see all the people, but my dad was behind me. <laughs> you were in my, you were in my thing. He, my dad was behind me, and um, and I looked over and I saw Kathy. And she was in her own aircraft carrier, and she, she, you know, had her things on, and she, she was ready to go, man. And she looked over at me, and she smiled. And, and you know, God said I was going to be doing these movements, you know, before the dream. Now, in the dream, Kathy's going like this. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is real. This is, like, real. And, and, and then I realized that Kathy wasn't alone in her flight carrier either, but Craig was behind her. And, um, and I couldn't hear them, but I could hear them in the spirit. And they were both smiling at me. And, um, and they were singing a, um, they were singing a song. Um, does anybody know the chick about Wow Wow? <laughs> Send people to hell. 
And you know what? God doesn't send people to hell. We send ourselves there. The light has come and people still choose darkness. The light has come and we still choose darkness. This is a God of love. That is the way back. He's not only, he's not making a way. He is the way. He is the truth. We step into him and everything changes. Does that make sense? I don't really even need it yet. I'm good. I don't even need it yet. And so I wake up. And so I wake up. And I've got like jet fuel of fire of God's love burning through me for you, for me. I mean, I'm so in love with myself. I see myself the way God. I don't care what you think. I, really. I don't care anymore what anybody thinks about me. But I'll tell you, oh, I sure love you. And I believe you all love me in your mind. The Bible says, I have to believe it. I have to believe it. Oh, he didn't mean to look at me that way. Oh. The Bible says that sin caused, um, caused us to be enemies with God in our mind. And my sin and my brokenness caused me to be enemies with God and with people in my mind. And so, to me, my reality was everybody is an enemy. Do you know what repentance has done? <laughs> everybody is my best friend. And everybody is so innocent and so pure. That's what repentance has done. For I almost can't see bad sometimes. I'm like, God's giving me rose-colored glasses, baby, and I ain't taking them off. I'm like, I'll fight for the good. I will fight for the purity. I will fight, you know, I will fight and Here today and go. 
on tomorrow. You know, we're stepping into our call, into our purpose. He says there's a time for every purpose. He said about David that there is the purposes of God. David served the purposes of God in his generation. Our generation has a purpose. I have a purpose and you have a purpose. And that purpose is significant. If you don't, who will? Because nobody else can do what you're called to do. Nobody else can express Jesus the way that you do. Nobody else is made in his likeness the way that you are. Shine. And so, I, 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 so, why am I over here? So, um, <laughs> so I'm driving. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so real. I'm weeping this morning. And I was like, oh God, how am I going to preach? I'm so overwhelmed by your love. And I'm so overwhelmed by your grace. And, um, and I drive down. What's that street right there? Corbett, I drive down to Corbett, and, and, I'm, and I'm right there, and uh, right end is on my left, and the train is stuck in front of me. And I'm like, my spirit was already so connected, my faculties were tuned in. I, my faculties were tuned in, and so I was already, God, what are you saying? This train was stopped, and I'm like, I've never seen a train stopped in the middle of the train, I'm not moving. I'm like, I can't see the end. I can't see the end. What's going on? And, and I look at the train where it stops right in front of me. There's a big circle and it says, Top Gun. I love it. I love it. I love it. 
because I, I, I'm not amongst people whose minds are in the earthly, earthly. But I'm amongst people whose minds are up in heaven. I will follow Kathy any day who says, you know what, I'm not settling. I'm not, I'm not stuck here. I'm not staying this. But we're going for the kingdom and all the kingdom has to offer. Wow. I've seen so much in my own life that it's just the beginning. Don't despise the day of small beginnings. And so, you know, I, I'm like, oh, wow, well, awesome. Okay, we're going to do testimonies next week. I can't wait, you know, like, like I said, I've got so much more to go. I got some deliverance yesterday, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, my God, what God did in one whole heart. Go there. Go there. Go there. One whole heart. And, uh. And so I've got so much more to go, but what God's done it is such a, a miracle. And I said, all right, God, what about my testimony do you want me to share next Sunday? And, and, and you see, God's always giving me double revelations. <laughs> it's like, and it's just true of the Spirit. One thing is totally true, and the exact opposite thing can also be totally true. It, it's just the ways of God. Like, I, I, don't, I don't quite get it. But it's everything about the Bible. There's like truths that seem opposite, but yet at times both are true. And so, you know, I'm saying, God, what about my story? And, 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 and I believe that there is so much life in your own story. Like, the purpose of God in your life, what is done in your life, your witness, part of my life call is to be a witness. And he said, you know, I've never been without a witness. And I'll send rain. And if you look, that's Acts 12, 14, 12 or 14, somewhere there. He said, I've never been without a witness, and I'll send rain. And in the beginning, the Spirit was hovering, and the Spirit would come down on prophets. And the law and the prophets were the witnesses before Jesus. Then John the Baptist, and Jesus comes, and it was always God's intent to eat the fruit. It was always God's intent to eat the fruit of life. God always wanted his life on the inside of us. It's why he created a tree of life in the Garden of Eden. He always wanted his life and his spirit to be on the inside. And so he says, the old is a foreshadowing of the good things to come. And so the law and the prophets, all that was a foreshadowing of the good. And God made a way that spirit would come down and go up, come down and go up. It wasn't until Jesus that that spirit came down, broke through, and came on the inside. Now, Jesus, the Spirit would come and remain. Woo! Woo! He comes and he remains. Woo! And so, you know, Jesus, he had, I love his message. Oh! It said, instead of his message, he said, to know where you come from and to know where you're going. Whenever I said, Kathy asked me to preach, do you know what I wrote down on my thing? To know where you come from and to know where you're going. And he says it the week before, and I'm like, oh my God, because we're sons and daughters, we come from above just like Jesus. We've got that incorruptible seed on the inside of us that cannot be corrupted, cannot be destroyed. Even death, Jesus' death on the cross marked the end of death itself. What? 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 And now he's on the inside, and Jesus went to the cross. So the Spirit came, and he said, and you go away for the promise of the Father. Whoa. And I will endue you with power from on high. And now you will be my witnesses. Yeah. Come on. He said, I'll never, be, I'll never be without a witness. And now we are the witnesses on the earth. Jesus, Jesus on the earth. I said in school, I was like, you know what? Thursday nights, I'm like, we're not laying hands on anymore. For now on, I'm going to bend you over and I'm going to kick you in the butt until you wake up to what Christ did you, the hope of glory. I mean, yes. wake up to the reality that he's in us and now we are his body on the earth. Jesus. What? Like, doesn't that blow your mind? Yeah. What? The Lord said, you want to be like your father? Go out and act like him. Go out into the world and start creating. Start doing what your father would do. Because the part of the growing up, yes, we enter in like children, but also this is meat, you guys. Meat is for the maturation, for the maturing us from kids, little babies, into sons and daughters of God. God doesn't give the keys to the kingdom. I'm telling you what, you don't give a brand new believer all the finances in the world. 
But I'll tell you what, what he'll do with all the finances in the world, what your father will do with all the finances in the world, he'll start giving you those keys. Wow. He says, I will, you know, he, you will, pro I beloved, I, I wish of all things that you would prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. And the soul is our responsibility. And so that's what I wanted to talk about a little bit. How am I doing? I, I, I have just a little bit. Because this is simple. But you know what? The gospel is simple. And what happened to me was simple, but I didn't get it. I didn't get it. I feel like I'm starting to get it. And, and I want to get it. Okay? I want to get it. And so, um, do you know what a UTI is? <laughs> no, you don't. A UTI. I curse bladder infections in Jesus' name. Yes. Yes. Jesus' name, I curse you. Oh, I love this about shame. Oh, God, I'm not going to go there. UTI. Cursing the fig tree. He cursed before he went to the cross. He cursed that fig tree. And he said, you will no longer bear fruit. And, I, and we just had fig newtons. And so I, you know, he wasn't talking literally there. He was talking in the spirit. The curse, the, the fig tree represents the knowledge of the good and evil. Of good and evil when, he, when we bit that lie and then we covered ourselves in shame. And he said, I'm going. Where I'm going, that thing will be cursed. And I'm going to curse shame forever. And so Jesus took that curse of shame on, on, us, on himself. And, and so here we have the UTI. And here we have shame, okay? These are our two identities. The unique, true identity, okay? Can you follow me? If you get this, it'll change your life as it changed my life. Because I I'm gonna just talk for briefly about di a couple of different theologies <coughs> and camps and, re and religions. Um, and it's coming from a place of not, uh, not thinking anything other than it's good to know what we believe. Am I right? Is it good to know what we believe? Yeah. I'm like, read the Bible, I'm like, oh, it's in the Bible. Like, I didn't even know I believed this. But it's in there, right? And so, um, everyone say UTI. UTI. Yeah. Unique. Unique. True. True. Identity. identity. This identity was in God before the foundation of the world. Oh. <laughs> this identity was before Adam. It was before sin. It is completely and totally pure. Believing that more than behaviors, thoughts, and feelings is what changes behaviors, thoughts, and feelings. Okay? So sin in your life, all that's going on in your life, what's going to change that is believing more who you are in God. Your unique, true identity. His spirit came on our spirit. His soul did not come on our soul. His body did not come on our body. His spirit came and became one with our spirit. Yes. It's a marriage, you guys. It's all of him and all of you, two becoming one. God's spirit inside your unique personality, gifting, and calling. It's a marriage. And so I'm not going to be just like Papa Dan. Praise God, I'm not going to be just like Kathy. You're not going to be just like me. We all represent a different part of who God is that he thought of in his calling and his grace before the foundations of the world. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. And so that is the spirit part. We're made up of body, soul, spirit. You guys know that. Body, soul, spirit, okay? His spirit came in me whenever I got saved. And then uh, this happened, right? <laughs> all this happened. And I'm like, what? I always wanted to be normal. You don't even understand that. Even when I was little, I was like, I just want to know what it's like. What's it like for everybody else? Like, I was so broken. Really broken. Just so broken. And I think, what is it like to be normal? When I got saved, I'm like, finally, I'm going to be normal. God put his fire on the inside of me. And I was anything but normal. Every church I went to, I'm like, no, but we're not. You have two identities. 
your unique true identity, and your false shame identity. This is where all of your addictions are. This is where all of your brokenness is. This is where your soul unhealed is. The goal is to get these two things lined up. Okay? And so, my man, it's like one point that I have today is the key to getting free of behaviors, emotions, thoughts, and feelings is to believe more what God says about you over here. Even if the way you're thinking doesn't agree with it. Even if you're saying, I'm not healed. Even if you're saying, I'm homosexual. Even if the believer, even if the, the thoughts are thinking that way. The change in tra God said, this is a transformational grace. Yes. His grace is not a greasy grace. It's not something we can do on our own, but its intent is to transform us and to make in us uh, and transform us into the very same image of Jesus Christ. And that happens when these two come together. Why in the world wouldn't God in baptism say, okay, dunk them, now send them on to glory? Why? Why? Why wouldn't he just have pastors keep us under and then let us be with Jesus if that's the better thing? I'll tell you why. Because you have a purpose. You have a purpose. Your life is significant. And he says, I want my transformed and transfigured body on you. The Son of God became the Son of Man so that sons of men could become sons of God. It's not us living these principles up there. It's us living those principles down here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and so when I said, God, what do you want me to do with my testimony? He, and I, and he shocked me because he said, and I said, these are two revelations, both true. And he said, I want you to get out of your story and into my story. Amen. And he said, I want you yes. to be able to communicate yes. my story yes. as well as you can communicate your own story. And I got so convicted, and what happened was, this came out of frustration. Uh, Nothing wrong. I just got done saying how awesome our stories are, right? Like, what God's doing in you is awesome. It's beautiful, right? So that is true. But what God was doing in me was saying, okay, now it's time to wrap your mind around what actually happened at that cross. Yeah. What actually yes. happened. Yeah. And the Lord said to me, he said, it's not ever about what you do. But it's about what you do with what I've done. Yeah. And I said, God, I don't even know what you've done. Like, I have an idea, but I, I, I want to learn. I want to learn. I want to learn. And, and he took me through this journey again of my story, showing me his story. And I'm almost done because this is really theologically important, okay? Because there's a lot of stuff out there. And we are learning how, we're not, we're, no, we're teaching, we're learning, we're doing. We are life followers, Okay. We follow life. Greg teaches, eat the meat, spit out the bones. Eat the fruit, spit out the pipe. Pipe? Yeah. 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 Eat the meat, spit out the pit. pit. Eat the fruit. Bones. The pit. Sit. We follow life. We follow life. And here's the thing, there is no perfect person. There is no perfect ministry. There is no perfect theology. Jesus Christ is perfect theology. Yes. And, and, and if there's anything God taught me in the beginning, I was so desperate for life. I laid a hold of life and I couldn't find it anywhere in any of the churches. And I'm like, I gotta go to YouTube. <laughs> go find it on YouTube. You know, and so I'm finding Bill Johnson. I'm finding like all these people that are carriers of revival and life. And, 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 and what's amazing about that is some of those people that I listen to that I receive so much from, I don't even listen to now. In fact, I think they're partly wrong. I'm like, well, my theology's changed. You know, I said, never forget that you receive life. You honor the life that you receive from him. And God said, I'm sharpening iron. I'm iron sharpens iron. And we bring in people like Brian the Strange from a different culture. You know, we bring in Justin Abraham, we bring in all these people, they, they're carrying life, but just because it looks different does not mean we can't receive what God is giving us through them. You see me being excited about the gifts that God brings, and I want you to know, hear it from me, I'm not putting anybody on a pedestal. 
I am not putting anybody in a pedestal. The important one here, I believe God is saying to us, is you. The body. Jesus hangs on the cross. He's not saying I'm important. He's saying I love them so much. Jesus is on the cross saying I'm doing it for you. I love you. My body is broken for you. And so God brings in a gift. I mean a powerful gift to serve us. And it's not, I get excited not because of how awesome they are. I get excited over how awesome God thinks you are. That he would send a gift like that to you. Do you know what God believes about us? Worldwide revivalists sent to Trenton, Pennsylvania. Because what God says he's doing here will touch the end of the world. Hello, Africa. Hello, Zimbabwe. Hello. I am more important there. When I'm up here, it's my gift to serve. I'm serving it's my number one. He says, rise and stand upon your feet, for this is the reason I appear to you both. To appoint you as a servant, a servant and a witness to the things you've seen in me and the things I will appear to you. Those are my calls, to be a servant and a witness. One is a function. One is identity. To testify what God has done to me and through me, what God has done to transform my identity. My number one enemy is shame. My number two enemy is purposelessness. You have a function. Yes. You also have a place to serve in your function. And I'll tell you what, that, that, that is significant. Your purpose is significant. And so if you, if you hear me talking, I'm hitting two things every time. I'm nailing shame and I'm nailing purposelessness. Because there are people walking around and they don't even know why they're alive. They don't even know why they're alive. They don't even know why the enemy has tried to destroy their lives. But it's because of the purpose of God on their life. And he's scared to death. And like you said, vengeance belongs to the Lord. He then puts his spirit on them in the place of their pain. And gives them authority over that. That your place of pain is your place of purpose. Pain is a portal. Oh, if I ever write a book, I'm going to say pain is a portal. We have so much access to God in the place of pain. He is the comforter, and we don't get hit unless we need comfort in That's exactly right. Oh, but yet we're so scared of pain. Oh my gosh, it's so, and so, okay, I'm almost done. And so, um, so this is what happened to me. And this is how I'm getting into his story to understand grace and mercy. When I, when I got saved, it was such a radical salvation. Like I said, I went from one, can you tell you, God bless her. When you think about anybody, think about her and pray for her. She lives with a nutcase. <laughs> and it's getting worse. <laughs> she needs help, grace. Her, she needs help. God bless her. She's the biggest miracle of my whole life. And so, it's true. It's true. And so, um, and so uh, the thing about me, before I got saved, was that I had such a strong, through bro brokenness soul. I know how to perform. I know how to get a perfect grade. I know how to make people believe what that I think they want to believe about me. I, I know how to basically anything that I wanted to do, I could do, I could figure it out out of brokenness. Going to the gym five hours a day, I could run 20 miles easy, like discipline in a broken way, like second to none, I could do it. When I got saved, I just transferred all of that into the kingdom and what happened was, living sinless was very easy for me, because I, 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 I there was there was no um, hurdles, there was no struggles, there was no difficulty. I was like on cloud nine. Joyce Meyer says when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, I was drunk on love for three years. You know, like I was drunk on love, so hot. I had the missionaries. You know, we are praying and worshiping hours a day in the Word of God. I didn't have children yet, so I could spend hours and hours with Jesus. Easy peasy. I could do that. I fasted all the time. I could, you know what I mean? And it's so spiritual. You know, I felt so spiritual. But what happened was, so, so I want to talk about works and grace, okay? And then I want to talk about us. In my language, works, works, grace. Lots of works, lots of grace, transformational grace. We are in the middle, okay? 
We believe in transformational grace. There are two very opposite sides uh, that, that has gotten into places of deception, okay? Where, where it's all works. You guys have to know this. You go into churches and they have to earn their salvation. Salvation is, you can't get around it. It is by grace you are saved through faith. You cannot do anything to earn your place, your spirit place up here. You can't earn it. It's a free gift. And there's a whole part of the body that believes that we've got to do penance, we've got to do all this stuff. And if we're not careful, that can creep into our walk right now. It's in there. I see it in myself all the time. Uh, that Kathy and your healing will call it performance, right? Yep. It's performance. And so what happened was a couple of years into my walk, all hell broke loose. I'm talking, your world flipping upside down. I was almost embarrassed because I'm like, why, why would any Christians want what I have? You know, uh, 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 my body's gotten so sick. My relationships are flipped upside down. My finances went, <laughs> everything went, <laughs> I had so much pain in my body. The doctors said it was Lou Gehrig's disease. They didn't even, they couldn't even tell me why my body was literally withering. And then so much, I, my dad, thousands and thousands of dollars doctors to trying to get me, you know, figuring out what's going on. And, and, and see, these guys, the works guys, it's all in their strength. All of it's in their strength. The grace guys, none of it is in their strength. It's all, it's all, all grace, all grace, all grace, all grace, all grace, okay? Follow me, you guys have to follow me. And so, um, my world's flipping upside down, and it was almost like God took my hands and literally <coughs> removed my own strength so that I could not work it out at all in my own strength. There's nothing I could do. I couldn't get up at 2.22 in the morning. My body was in so much pain, I couldn't see Jesus all day long. And what happened was all that pain, that was see when I got saved, my soul got surface touched, right? They told me when I got saved that my soul got saved, and that, that is not true. You're, it says that the end of your faith is the salvation of your soul. He says that we work out our salvation in our soul, in fear and trembling, God working with us. Yeah. We work it out here on earth. This is a big deception and misconception that we need to understand. This race, this walk is about working it out, the salvation in our soul, so that when our soul gets hit, it's not all of the pain that comes out, it's Jesus that comes out. When we get cut, when we get hit, it's the glory of God that shines instead of all of our deep inward pain. Right? It's the enemy of God. It's opposite of God. And so we're working this thing out, but whenever all that stuff started going on, all my addictions started coming back up to the surface. What time is it, Mom? Oh, no. I got <laughs> 1222, okay. And so, and so uh, I'm almost done. But this is a really important thing. I see every watch looker. Poor Greg. <laughs> so, so, um, and so, you know, as the Lord removed my strength, what had to happen was things came up that I couldn't control. And that's whenever I say, you know, bin, the binge eating, I'll tell you about binge eating was very difficult. Binge eating was very deep. In me, very deep. I was delivered of it in the beginning, but the moment all that pain started coming to the surface, I literally felt like sometimes I was leaving my body and I had to do something to numb the pain because the pain was so bad. This is so deep, and I, every time that would happen, I had to receive the grace and mercy of God, Jeez. which I never needed before. Because I was able to, I mean, don't get me wrong, I needed the blood of Jesus. But for those sins that you can't get out of, I'll tell you what, what changes those things is the grace and the mercy and the goodness of God that brings yeah. us to repentance. Yeah. I never experienced that until God brought it all to the surface. I, I remember one time, weep, I'm literally weeping. I'm weeping. I'm weeping and I'm writing it out. I'm saying, grace is you get what you don't deserve. Mercy is you don't get what you do deserve. It's the goodness of God that transforms people's lives. It's the goodness of God that makes the difference. And, and, you know, God's goodness. And Moses saw God's goodness and it passed in front of him. I'm not going to go back into Moses. But 
What happened to me after I, I had a couple of good years of needing God's grace and God's mercy is my behavior, not all of it, but a good, a good part of it began to transform. And things began to lean as my heart and my soul got healed. And, uh, and so, you know, and so we've got these Jesus. different camps. One's works, one's all grace. These guys, see, see the differences. And what we believe is, is we separate, okay? We separate body, soul, and spirit. Because these guys, the grace people, say there is no more sin. These guys say you don't have to repent. A lot of them, they're way off in the deep end. You don't have to repent. You're already saved. We, transformational grace people, we're the grace works people, separate them and we get our unique, true identity from the Spirit in the Spirit while we fully recognize that our soul is broken and needs healed. So when we sin, the answer and the way out to transformation is believing this more. And then behavior, thoughts, and feelings change. Yes. They told me, the pastors told me, you guys, they told me. That Romans 7, 14 through 25, oh, don't worry about that. It's everybody has it. What you don't want to do, you do. And what you don't, what you do, do, you don't want to do. And God said, no. Read Romans 8, where the spirit of the living God, he said, the law of sin and death has been broken by the law, the law of the spirit. The law of the spirit has set us free from the law of sin and death. And what that is, is when the truth of the spirit actually becomes received in your soul, you're free. You have to believe it. And my message is, I don't care whatever lie you believe to bring that brokenness on. You received it because you believed it. Your behaviors, thoughts, feelings, and emotions aligned with what you really believe. As a man thinks, so is he. But what I want to say, the good news is this. When you bite the lie, when you eat of the life, it's as it, it, it works the same way. Your behaviors, thoughts, and feelings change as you believe the truth. It's why in the, in the desert, he said, look at the serpent. Look at the lie. If you look at the snake, you'll be healed. If you look at the lie that bit you, the venom on the inside of the snake has the anti-venom in it to bring the healings. When you look straight at your life pain, yes. when you look straight at the, the yes. lie that you believe, God brings truth to set free. You repent. Your mind changes. Your beliefs change. And you now up in the kingdom, baby. His purpose for you is up here, mind, body, soul, spirit. Down here, we look like Jesus. We look like Jesus. We talk like Jesus. We perform like Jesus. Everything like Jesus is possible through the transforming power of grace. Father, I pray that every single one of us 
we go on a journey of asking God, what do I look like in the Spirit? What do I look like in the Spirit? <coughs> and that would be my challenge to you today. Ask God, what do I look like in the Spirit? And then walk life out is how you look in the Spirit. And then when you fall back, like, I want to say this way. Ask God what you look like, when, what you look like in the Spirit, you're going to go to You're going to step up. You know, sometimes things happen and you're, you're going to forget what you look like in the Spirit, you're going to fall back. And then just ask Him again. Well, take me back to what I look like in the Spirit. And you're ready. And you're ready. So Father, I thank you, Lord, that you always intended us to live in the Spirit. So teach us, teach us, Lord. Make us fully awake and fully aware when we're living in the Spirit and when we're living in our soulish realm or in the flesh, so that we can live and breathe and move by the place of the Spirit, the place of life. That's what life is, life and life more abundantly, living in the Spirit. Hmm. And I just feel like God wants me to just say to you, living in the Spirit, it doesn't mean that you have your head in the clouds and you don't know what the heck's going on. That's not what living in the Spirit is. Living in the Spirit is being fully awake and fully aware of what's going on, but also not allowing those things to affect who you are. Yeah.